right, so now we're going to talk about touch events or on press events. So like we discussed previously, we cannot use the event on click or on touch or on press. We need to use and bring and use uh, the uh, correct component. So for now, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it at the top. And this is just to, you know, just to explain what we're going to use. I'm going to leave this uh, pretty much empty right now. So you have several ways of adding buttons and actions, you know. So if you go to documentation, everything is in docs. You're going to go, you can go to search and uh, search for handling touches. This is going to give you the, uh, the documentation of what you can use to handle touches. So you have several ways. The most basic one is the button component. Don't worry, I'm just going to show you right now. I'm going to bring the button at the top. So I'm going to say button. And then, of course, we can use it just like we use the text and the view. I'm going to use button. Now, if I uh, do something like this, let me just make it a self-closing tag. If I do something like this and run the simulation, uh, we're going to get an error. So it's going to say the title prop of a button must be a string. So with each component, we get some specific properties. And some components, they will need, uh, and this is a must, some properties in order to work. In case of the button, uh, what we need is the title. Now, if I go back to the docs, right here, they give us an example. And they give us a link to see, you know, what this button is all about. And if I open a new tab and check it right here, they give you some examples, you know, how this looks. And right here at the bottom of each component, you get the components right here, and you get the props that you can use. Now, with each component, the properties are very specific. You cannot do whatever you want right here. And it kind of makes sense. For example, the button, it's a native button component for the uh, device. So you can do an unpress, you know, to trigger an action. You can add the title, maybe change the color if it's disabled and that's it. Notice that you cannot add uh, custom stylings for this. This is just the default button you get with the device. So for example, right here it says the title. Okay, we can add a title. So the title is gonna be, I don't know, uh, title add one because we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna say add one. Let me go back to the simulator and reload it and we get the add one. That's, you know, really cool. And this is the default layout we get with this device. Now, if I go to Android uh, and I reload it, we get a different type of button. Again, this is the native button. And you can only modify this properties, maybe the color, right? If it's disabled or enabled, that's it. You cannot do anything else. Everything, if you want to add a little bit, uh, you know, well, the stylings of what's happening right here, you can wrap it in a view and that view will modify a little bit of what's happening. But th that's that's the only thing you can do. Now to trigger something, and this is the most important part of the button, is what you're going to do when you press it. So in this case, we will need to use the property on press. Let me make it a little bit better. So of course, this is just a function that you can run. And I'm just going to say alert, you know, trigger. Okay, so I'm going to reload the uh, application. Let me just, there we go. So I'm going to reload it. And if I click at one, you know, we get the alert trigger. So if you need a, just a basic button, you know, this, this is the one you will need to use. Now, in real life, uh, you're going to use some custom buttons because this ones are just, you know, fuggly. So you will not maybe just use the button. So you get other ways to you know, maybe create your own button with your own layout and trigger some actions. You get a different way of doing this and it's not through button. Let's go back to the handling touches. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, uh, you're gonna get something that says touchables. So they give you four ways of uh, for you to create maybe a view and to wrap it on a component that will listen for touch events. And it's the touchable highlight the native feedback, the opacity, and without feedback. Now, uh, they all of these methods, they do pretty much the same, but they have small differences. Let's, uh, let's do first the touchable without feedback. That's the, the easy one. So I'm going to enter the docs of this one, the touchable without feedback, and notice all the props and the difference of the props. 
and you know <laughs> really uh, really different so again with bottom we get the default bottom for the uh, for the device but with this one what we do with the touchable and without feedback is that we can wrap whatever content we have inside you know with the stylings and everything else we can wrap it and if we touch this component since it's going to be wrapped with the touchable without feedback this will trigger an on press event and that's why you get a lot more props because this is a much more dynamic component you can delay the press you can you know add maybe some uh, callbacks to this you can do a lot of things more you can still uh, you you can uh, of course uh, you cannot do the styles on this one this is just a component that wraps something that has styles so i'm going to comment this one at the top and you know we can use it this is some this is one of the things you learn uh, by example i'm going to copy right here the touchable without feedback it's a long text and I'm gonna bring that component at the top all right and I'm gonna instead of uh, of course uh, I'm, I'm still using the views but I'm gonna go here and bring the touchable without feedback and I'm gonna wrap my content with this all right so I'm gonna go at the top and you know save it now if I go to the uh, simulator and I rerun it this time we are not getting an error message and it's because just to use the touchable without feedback we don't need to pass any props because again we don't need a title we are just wrapping this component now of course you get all of these props you're gonna check some of these props for example we of course get the same on press we got with the button so if i do on press and uh, i don't know press and uh, we say that we want to of course uh, trigger a function or something like that we can uh, still use this let me just copy this one at the top and of course, if we press it, there we go. And if we press it, we are getting the alert trigger. So that works. Now again, you get a lot of properties properties with this. You can do on long press, so on long and then press. And that one, what it's gonna do is gonna delay or actually it's gonna await for a long press. So let me just co comment this out. So if I reload the application and I you know, press it, nothing happens. Now, if I press and hold, then it's going to trigger. And if I, then you get other properties like, let me just copy this one and comment out. So you have on, instead of on long press, you have on press in. So press in. So this one, it's going to trigger as soon as you press it. As soon as you start pressing the button, it's going to trigger. And then you have the opposite of this. And this is actually pretty similar to what we get on web. So instead of press in, it's gonna be press out. So if I start pressing the at number, nothing is gonna happen. But as soon as I release uh, the mouse, or in this case, you know, the finger, then it's gonna trigger. You know, really, really cool stuff. You get a lot of support for this. And this is actually all you need. So let me show you one more. I was not gonna do it, but you know, what the heck. I'm gonna say delay and uh, delay long press and say equal and open and close and I'm gonna you know pass a number maybe three seconds now uh, this this property what it's gonna do uh, of course it's gonna detect the long press and it's gonna delay it for three seconds so maybe what you want to do uh, you want to uh, for the user to await uh, maybe an amount of time before the function triggers so if I save it and I do long press, it's gonna delay it three seconds. Makes sense. So I'm gonna long press, it's gonna be delayed by three seconds, and then it's gonna trigger. So of course, you, again, you get all these properties, you get the on blur, the on focus, you know, and if you could click right here, it's gonna tell you what uh, type of uh, it is. You know, it is a function. Whenever we go on focus, you can uh, trigger a function, or you know a blur, pretty much the, the, the standard thing we get uh, for a web component. All right, okay. So of course, what we want to do right here is that whenever we click or actually we press it, we want to fire a function that is going to go to app and it's going to add a random number. That's that's what I want to achieve right here. We want to press it, you know, press, and we want to show a random number right here at the bottom. So let's uh, create that layout right now. So I'm going to go to the app.js and I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to add first a state that calls random. 
And this random uh, will get um, maybe an array with some, I don't know, random values, doesn't matter. We are not gonna use it right now, we're gonna use it in a minute. So what I want to do is that every time we tap or we press the generator, I want to run a function that will uh, you know, increase or add a random number to this list. You know, it's gonna modify the state, real simple stuff. If you're kind of a confused in what I'm doing right here, it's because you need to learn a little bit more about React. So remember to go to the final section of the course where you get uh, an additional optional section for just React for Web. So I'm gonna say uh, add random, and this is gonna be just a function. And for now, I'm just gonna say alert, you know, add random, just to make sure that when we click it, we are firing this function. So then I'm gonna go to generator and I'm gonna pass a prop to this component. So every time we uh, click it, we actually press it, we're gonna do something. So on add random, I'm gonna say that we want to run this on add random, which is a reference to this function we have right here. All right, simple stuff. Now on the parent, on the child component, which is the generator, we need to tell the application that, you know, we want to do something with that prop. So I'm gonna go and comment this out. Uh, of course, we need to uh, listen for props. And then we when we click it, when we do on press, let me bring the on press, we want to do this and say we want to trigger the props and trigger that at function. Now, if I save it and I tap it, of course, we are getting the at random. This is pretty uh, standard React, not, not related to uh, React Native. Now, what I want to do, I want to show a list of numbers. When the application loads, it's going to pick the random uh, values we have right here, and we're going to create one text, one view with the random number inside you know, one for each. So for this one, we need a different component. We're gonna create it right now, and then in the next section, we're gonna finish this. I'm gonna create a new file called, I don't know, man, list item.js. All right, so list item. So on this one, uh, we're just gonna uh, render a stateless component. So I don't want to type all over again. I'm just gonna copy this one. Don't complain. In real life, you, you will do the same thing. You just copy from a different component. So const, uh, I'm gonna call it list item. It's gonna be equal to something. And then we just, you know, do this. We will be, uh, you know, using props and we're gonna return some JSX, pretty standard. Now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say const styles. And again, I'm just gonna copy from the other one. All right. You should do the same thing. Uh, again, not gonna use this one and I need to export the list item. So on the style sheet create, I will create a view right here. So I'm gonna say I want to create a view and uh, actually it's not closing because I made a mistake with this one, sorry for this. Talking and doing this, not so simple. So okay. I'm gonna do view and uh, this view will have a style. So I'm just gonna add the style right now and we will create it in a minute. So this is gonna be styles and iconic, I'm gonna call it list item. All right. And now inside we will render the number of, uh, you know, that random number. So on this one, I'm just gonna say text and maybe just a random number. Now I'm gonna add this styles. So I'm gonna say list item and this one will get a background color of, I don't know, uh, maybe uh, kind of a grayish. So CE, CE, CE. Uh, we are still gonna align the item. So align uh, items, just like that. And then it's gonna be center. All right, what else? We're gonna add some padding, padding 10. We can add the width uh, again, 100%. I know this is boring, but we need to do it. And then I'm gonna add a margin top because we will add many elements right here. So margin top and maybe just five. Okay. So of course we need to include this list item from within the, the uh, you know, the parent component. We need to call it from there. So I'm going to go at the top and I'm going to import the component, import uh, list item from that four slash SRC and list item. Now, of course, on the uh, we need to include right here at the bottom. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to show the random numbers maybe below this list item, open and close. 
Now, I'm going to say items equals and then this, that state, that random. So you can imagine what's going to happen right here. This list item will receive a list of all the random numbers we have right here. In a minute, we're going to create a map right here so we can loop through that list and show one uh, view for each, right? That's what we want to do. And then, of course, when we add a new number, I want to click on the button, trigger this function, modify the state, and that will get reflected on the list item. Let's add the map right now because we have some uh, default uh, numbers, default default values. So we can actually map uh, that, that uh, the content. All right, so I'm going to go uh, at the top. I'm going to say, OK, props dot, we are passing items dot, and then we're going to map it. So on each iteration, we're going to return some JSX. Now on each iteration, we also get the item and we're going to get the ID. And I'm going to chop this and put it inside here. All right, simple stuff. Again, basic, uh, basic React. So, of course, uh, when we do this, uh, we need to pass a key. If not, uh, React will give us an error message. We need to provide a key. So, ID. All right. So, this should work. If I reload the application, uh, undefined, it's not an object. Props, items, that map. I made a mistake with this. So, are we passing items? It's items. All right. I'm going to reload it. And, of course, we get the random numbers. All right. So we get the 20, we are getting a different number. So I'm going to go here and say that we want the item. All right, so now we load it and we have 20 and 837. So let's go to the next section. And every time we add a number, we're going to add a number to that state and the changes will get reflected right here. Pretty, pretty simple stuff.